Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So this is part one of sewing room machines and things. I have quite a few things to upcycle, repair, repaint, age, and actually prepare for the sewing room and dress shop. So let's go ahead and get started. So I wanted to begin with this little sewing machine that was given to me by my precious Aunt Audrey. It was actually a Christmas ornament of some type. And so I'm going to rework it and really make it work well for the sewing room part of the dress shop. So I was trying to decide whether I could salvage the legs. And then I realized that they really couldn't be salvaged because they looked too primitive and juvenile and didn't look very realistic. So I knew I would need to make new legs. I kept looking at the red color. It was a little bit different, but I kind of realized that at one point that I really liked the red color and I wanted to preserve it. So I had to figure out a way to make that work. And also with the little painted on drawers, I would need to make that a little bit more realistic too. Now I have a spare sewing machine that came with a bundle that I received recently, but it really wasn't going to work well because the top of the red table had no hole in it. So I decided to use the metal spare sewing machine to rework it into the original sewing machine that has survived the fire. So dolls, if you look there, you can see some of the paint is peeling. There's glue residue. So I sanded it down a little to make it a little smoother because I want the surface to be reasonably flat because I'm going to add an additional layer of wood to the top of the original sewing machine to give it an extension to provide more of a sewing surface so that I can put more things. Now here you can see I totally disassembled the sewing machine my aunt gave me. So I'm going to work with the original one a little bit and show you what I mean. Now this spare sewing machine is made of metal. It's a little bit heavier. Now this original sewing machine um, table is actually a chrism bond, so it's plastic. It's very lightweight. So I actually need to close up the hole and actually make it a little bit more weighty or heavier so it can actually hold the metal machine. So I'm adding a piece of wood to the inside of the hole to act as a platform or a base for the metal machine. And I'm trying to put it at a level so that the metal sewing machine will be lifted up to the same level part of the top of the opening if you know what I mean dolls you'll see what I mean as I show you now I'm placing it there just to see how it looks and if it will fit and I realize my theory is correct so I'm going to glue that piece of wood inside allow it to dry and then determine whether I need to add additional wood now here I am adding a really messy glob of glue around the edges of the wood but no worries dolls it's going to be inside the machine you'll never see it and this is the Gorilla Wood Glue, which is an excellent adhesive, so extra is not necessary. Now, dolls, I don't ever recommend over gluing. Use an appropriate amount to cause your items to stick, but use it sparingly. Glues that are made today are very effective, so you don't need a lot, and you don't want your project to look messy. And having said that, I added more glue. So I turned my attention back to the little red sewing table. Now I needed to add legs since I removed the ones that were originally on it and I want all the sewing machines to be at the same level. So I realized I could use staircase spindles to be the legs on the side of the red table but I would need to naturalize the color because I decided to keep the red. Now the staircase spindles were a little bit long so I cut the little tips off of them but I'm going to save those tips because I may need them later on. When I removed the tips from the spindles, it made it the same height as the original dollhouse sewing table. So I added my glue, a sparing amount, and I added the modified staircase spindles as legs. Now dolls never pass up opportunity to have a few staircase spindles on hand, whether you have a staircase or not. They have many, many wonderful uses, so definitely keep them on hand. <laughs> So let's allow that to dry and work on the actual sewing machines. Now the sewing machine here is the one from the original dollhouse and it actually is made of plastic and it's flat. It doesn't have the little legs on it like the ones that are made from metal. But I'm trying to just make it a little bit more realistic by painting the actual uh, wheel part in a gold tone. Now I am using my testers paint and just highlighting some of those little details that are on the sewing machine just to make them stand out a little bit more 
Now, I probably could have been a little bit neater, but I'll fix that in another part of the detailing. So I went on and added gold to all of the sewing machines and again, touched up any of those small areas to highlight them, to make them look visible from a distance. Now here, I just wanted to show you that I had started work on the large sewing machine. This is the one that came off of the red table. Now the wheel that was actually on it, I thought was a little large and out of scale. And I thought this little steering wheel that my grandson's left on the floor would fit it a little bit better. So I tried to adjust it and decided that it needed to be connected with a wire. I actually ended up drilling a hole into the little steering wheel and making room for a small piece of paper clip so I could actually glue it inside of the hole that was left originally on the corner of it. Now there was a little stub on the end that I actually removed so I didn't have to actually drill a hole there but I did need to add a small piece of the paper clip so that I could connect them. Now I did use my Loctite glue on this one instead of the Gorilla Wood glue. I just find that the Loctite glue works really well when working with metal. And then I began to paint the little wheel gold as well. Now I protruded a little bit more than the other ones, but I just figured that would just make it look more vintage. Now that the legs on the red table were dry and it was nice and sturdy, it was time for me to add a little bit more detail. So I cut out some small sticks from my Birchwood coffee stir sticks to be the little drawer fronts. Now they are painted on drawer fronts on this little table, so I decided not to reinvent the wheel, but to just use those as my guide as to where to put the drawer fronts. Now there was a small ridge on the edge of the table right above where I added the legs that I felt like needed to be finished off. So I worked with the birch wood stick and then I actually ended up using a piece of wood that was actually smaller than the smallest stir stick. And I just added little glue and finished the top of that to extend the table to match the level of where I added the legs. So dolls, this is just one of those instances where you don't exactly know what to do, but you do know that some things need to be taken care of. And that's why you don't throw away any of your scraps because you never know what you might need. So after I sanded off the top of the little table, there is a hole where the original sewing machine was added. And I wanted that to be filled in because I didn't need it. So I used from some of my DAP plastic wood filler it's easy to spread and fills the hole completely. And when it dries, it'll be sandable and paintable. And here I'm just playing around with the original sewing machine from the first sewing table to see how it'll work out on the new red table. And I think it's gonna be perfect. So I went on to add a special detail to my sewing machine that I've always thought looked really, really cute. My original dollhouse sewing machine, I added red thread to the spool of thread on top and along the body of the sewing machine. I'm not sure why I chose red. I think red was my favorite color when I was a little girl, but I just think it stands out so well next to the black and the gold. So I'm gonna put red thread on all the machines. Now here I'm just giving you a view of multiple angles as to what I did. I just wrapped it a few times around the spool and then pulled it down to the end where the machine gets to the point where you would put it in for the actual needle. And I just put a couple dabs of glue along that little detail and tap the string along there. So it's a very simple detail, but it really gives a lot. So now dolls, I'm back to the, sewing, the original sewing machine where I added the piece of wood. The wood is good and dry, all the layers are dry. So now I'm just fitting the metal sewing machine down in there and fitting it so that I can enclose it so it'll become a permanent part of the table. Now I did have that additional piece that sits on the front and I just wanted to make sure everything closed up nicely with the sewing machine on the inside. So I'm noticing that all of these little metal sewing machines, they're pretty much a standard size. So replacing it with this piece was not a problem at all. Now, although I did really like the fit, how neat it was, but it needed to be a little bit higher so it would get up to the level of the top of the table. So I did end up adding a second piece of the 1 16th inch basswood inside of the base. And that brought it up just enough that it would sit level with the rest of the table. 
So again, here I'm just doing the dry fit, tri fit, and you see how it's level. And I'm still able to put the little piece of wood in. It doesn't distort the fit for that. So now I know for sure that my theory was correct, that it needed two pieces of wood to bring it up to the proper level. So now it's time to add my glue. And I'm just showing you here from the bottom, it looks very nice and neat. It's solid. It doesn't even look like it wasn't a part of the original design. Now, although it wasn't glued in, I did have a little trouble getting that second piece out to add the glue. So I did have to use my little tweezers. So here I am adding the glue to the second piece and now it will be in there permanently. Now let me get the rest of this together and make it fully assembled. So I'm adding glue to the inside so I can actually glue the sewing machine. I just basically added glue on the two sides, mainly where the legs will sit. And after sitting the sewing machine in, I used my Loctite glue to glue that top piece in to secure everything. And when all that dries, it'll be nice and secure. I guess this is officially a trick out of a Crism Bond kit using the metal sewing machine. But I think it looks really nice and I'm actually really, really pleased with the overall result. Now in this instance, I am adding a small piece of wood to the front and the back to stabilize the sewing machine base because there seemed to be a little gap there. Now for this original sewing machine table, I did create two extenders for both sides of the sewing machine to give me more of a surface to add things, more accessories and more details. Now dolls for the extenders on this table, I'm not adding hinges. I'm just going to glue the wood because I don't need this one to be workable. I just need it to house more accessories. Now, although this machine survived the fire and was pretty much intact, but it is missing the foot pedal. So I will need to replace that. But before I get to that, I'm going to go ahead and stain the wood. Now, in this instance, I did not use actual wood stain. I felt like my acrylic paint color was closer to the color of the original table. And since I'm trying to mat naturalize the new pieces and components into the old piece, I thought I would stick with something that was close to the color. Now, this color is called Real Brown, and it's by Folk Art. Although I watered it down, I used multiple coats to make it get as close to the color of that original brown as I could. And then I painted them both. And after doing the first two coats, I did one more coat on the entire piece to bring all the layers together. So now we're back to the red table. The legs are nice and dry. Everything's stable. The extended area is dry. Now I did decide to just go ahead and leave the top of that table kind of worn looking. I thought the wear on it looked pretty natural. So I left the surface of the red table alone and just added the real brown to the legs to give it a deeper tone before I added any red. And after I added a layer to all of the legs, I allowed it to dry and then did a little shadow work or aging around the wooden table that I had made previously. Now this one I did not make in the video. I made it a couple years ago, but I used one of those little metal sewing machines and just built a table around it with a hinged flap. I may need to do a separate video to show you dolls how I did that, but let's go on. So I mixed some cardinal red with some brown to paint on top of the wooden legs to give them that same look, kind of a deep patina red, like the red table already was painted. And dolls, when I'm trying to make something look aged and worn, I like to do things in layers. To me, the layers add history to the aging process. Now, while the legs are drying, I went on and added the little drawer fronts that I had cut out. And I added the little wooden drawer fronts to where the drawn out pictures of the drawers had been. Now in this frame, I'm showing me using the testers black paint to correct the areas that I had gotten out of hand with the gold paint and to add a little shine to this little sewing machine. I also added a little nail art to the center to give the impression that that's some type of logo. I think that little coat of shiny black paint really gave this sewing machine an upgrade. So I'm back to my red table. I'm adding the red paint to the drawer front so that all of that will look like one unit that will look like they were original on there. I did mix 
the cardinal red with a little bit of the real brown to give it kind of a, again, a patinaed look and made sure I covered all the edges. Now I didn't show it here, but I added the nail art studs as the drawer pulls. I simply drilled a hole in each of the drawer fronts and glued the rounded part of the nail stud to the drilled hole. Now I did feel like it needed a middle drawer, so I cut another piece of the coffee stir stick to go on the front and the back of the desk. These pieces were already pre-stained because they were left over from when I did the beadboard in the hallway, entrance hallway video. Now I will leave a link in the description for that video and also for many of the materials that I used in this video as well. Now here I am adding the little faux drawer using more glue than is necessary as usual, but I think it turned out really cute. Now after that dries, I am going to add a drawer pull to that, but in the meantime, I went ahead and added the little Krizenbahn sewing machine to the top of the red table. Now remember, the red table does not have a hole and the Krizenbahn sewing machine is flat. So I glued them and then I drilled a small hole in the front of the drawer, added a little super glue gel and then added the nail stud. So now dolls, we're in the home stretch and ready for the grand finale. So I've pulled together several remnant pieces that I found in the bottom of my bag of what are you saving that for? And just tried to come up with some type of way to make it look like there's some type of working mechanism that causes the sewing machine to actually work. Now dolls, the contraption I'm about to make is not going to actually work. It's going to be fixed. I just needed to give the impression that it is a working machine. So I found these little scrap pieces. Now they're the wrong color. I'm definitely going to have to paint everything. But I was inspired by this great big giant snap that I found. And I thought it would make a great wheel for the foot pedal. So I played around with the little remnant pieces and held the little snap up to it to see how it would look. And I thought if everything was painted black and it was all assembled and glued under the little table, that it would look like the foot pedal part of the sewing machine. So here I'm just holding everything together, but now I need to start to make the pieces fit together. Now the little piece that I wanted to be the foot pedal was this little red part that looked like a small piece of ladder, but I felt like it needed to be closed in. So I added a little piece of wood to the top of it to make it like a square. So I cut two little small wood sticks and glued them to both ends of the little red ladder piece. Now these are some scraps left over from some sort of kit. So it's a lot of assorted pieces. Wasn't really sure what it went to, but it's working perfect in this project. One piece had a little rough edge on it. I sanded it down and began to fit it together with another piece. Now again, I'm just trying to see how it'll fit in a way that it'll fit under my table. This little scrolly piece kind of fits into this little slingshot shaped piece. So I just added glue to that part so that these two pieces will look like one piece and they'll actually be the leg and the main piece that I will use to attach the big snap to. Now here are all of my little pieces all painted and dry and ready to be assembled. I'm just doing a little touch up here. So I already checked the height to make sure that it would fit under the table nice and neatly. And so I'm going to just need a little glue. And I love that the little table is sort of like a block because it gives me a nice solid sound surface to glue that leg to so it doesn't wobble. So I added a little glue to the little slingshot portion, which will be the top part of my leg. And it will be glued to the body of the desk on the under part. So you just watch how I do it. I just stick it under there. And as you can see, I've got plenty of excess glue oozing. And I'm gently trying to clean some of it up with a little stick. But here I am adding the bar that I've got going across to the other side to stabilize the structure. Because anytime you do something like this, you don't want a piece like that just hanging free. It actually needs something to brace it and this little piece was perfect it was the perfect width and it fits over to the other side so i'm just using it as a brace and as part of the structure 
And in the end dials, we're going to pretend like that oozing glue is some type of welding of the metal pieces. I will paint over it in black. But definitely dials, be sparing when you apply your glue. I just can't seem to shake it. So now that the main part of the leg is on, I've got the brace on, I've got the actual scrolly leg. So let's go ahead and add that wheel, which is my great big gigantic snap. And I'm going to lay it right on top of that part that has the scroll work on it. And from this angle, that really does look like a foot pedal wheel to me. So I'm going to go ahead and add glue to the scroll work and lay my little snap on. Now, normally dolls, I do use my um, Gorilla uh, Gel Super Glue for metal. But in this case, because the snap is flat and the scroll work has a flat surface, I'm not concerned about it not adhering. I really like to use the gel glues for metal if it's really small areas that I'm trying to adhere. But in this instance, I think the Gorilla Wood glue works well. And I'm laying my big snap in there. And again, from this angle, that definitely looks like a foot pedal wheel to me. So now after creating the foot pedal mechanism let's go ahead and add in the foot pedal now that was that little ladder piece that I added the two little pieces of wood to you see I have painted it and I'm going to glue it to the bottom of the wheel and the two exposed pieces of the scroll work and I hope you can see um, from this angle what I'm doing I just laid it there to adjust it so it'll look like the dial can put their foot on it and pump it so that the machine will work. And here I am adding three little dabs of Gorilla Wood glue to the little wooden piece and along the edge of the wheel so that my little foot pedal will be secure. And from this angle, I just realized I didn't paint the end of that sewing machine gold, so I will need to touch that up. Now dolls, I will complete the large sewing machine in part two of this series. So let's do a quick recap. So this was the sewing machine that I actually built a table around prior to this particular video, but I did age it a little bit. This is the one I have the hinge on. I will do a video at another time where I actually build this full table, but yeah, this video was going to be way too long if I did it in this particular one, but I had to create a mechanism for it as well. It doesn't work, but I think it looks really cute. So let me show you. This was my original dollhouse sewing machine, the one that survived the fire. I built a base under it to add the metal machine. This actually was originally a Crisombon kit, so I guess you could call this a tricked out Crisombon sewing machine. And then here is the actual Crisombon sewing machine on top of a little um, generic wooden table that I actually um, added new legs to and built a mechanism under it, but I actually left the top of it the same. This is the little sewing machine that my aunt gave me that what used to be a Christmas ornament. So dolls, you can make miniatures out of absolutely anything. All you need is a few scraps, a little time, and a little bit of imagination. Now, dolls, there will be a part two of sewing machines and things, so definitely be looking out for that. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.